Welcome back on the show today. And I am very excited about this time on the show because uh, I have two of my favorite people. I call them my favorite people because they're lawyers, just like my humble self. And I wish Olive was here, actually, so we could, you know, dig around this all the more. With me on the show today is Tolu Olaloye, who is a senior um, associate at um, Jackson Etienne Edu um, practitioners. And also we have with us Aziz Akonde. They're here to talk about intellectual property. So welcome on the show. Thank, Thank you, you so sir. much. You. you look great, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, you're not bad as well. So, 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 so tell, tell me now, you uh, majoring on intellectual property. Yes, sir. What, give us a base definition of intellectual property. So intellectual property is basically um, a property, an intangible asset mm -hmm. that, ask, that come from your intellect, such as your copyright, your trademarks, your brand name, and also your utility model. So basically intellectual property is your, a creativity and innovation that comes from the intellect. That's what intellectual property simply means. Okay. Now, Mr. Aziz, um, of course, you know that when we talk about creativity that comes from your intellect, you're talking about the mind now. Correct. And you're talking about, you know, securing all that the mind produces that makes profit too. Correct. Now, give us an example of some of these things that we can term under intellectual property. Okay, good. Um, for example, music. Okay. Um, maybe things that people manufacture. Mm -hmm. Anything that comes from your mind, from the work of your brain, mm. that's what intellectual property covers. So why should we take it seriously? In past times, we know that um, musicians then, they used to sing songs, they have records, uh, 80s, 90s. Sorry, I wasn't born in those times particularly. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> then we now had issues of people actually saying that their songs, you know, were stolen mm -hmm. at some point by mm -hmm. new artists of the new age. So now there's been cases where um, some people came out and said there was no copyright to this. You didn't, you know, get a patent right to it saying, okay, it's mine and mine alone, so you shouldn't. What are the things that a person that owns this property that was produced from his intellect, what are the things that he or she should do? So okay, yes. Yeah. So I think the first thing that needs to be done is to actually get an IP intellectual property lawyer to identify what is the particular intellectual property that you have. Because we have different types of intellectual property. So when we're talking about patents, for instance, you're talking about inventions, you're talking about processes like your fridge, how the fridge works, or how your phones work, that is patent. When you're talking about copyright, it has to do with creativity, the artist. Mm. So that comes under copyright. And then when you're talking about the design, like a particular design of a fridge, there are different kind of fridge that we have now. Mm. So the design, it can be the design for the fridge. And then also, you have um, um, your, your, your products. So that product, with respect to your copyright, your trademark, your trademark is your logo. So for instance, you have Wazobia TV. That's your trademark. You know, so Wazobia TV is your trademark. That everyone knows that when you're talking about, there are different TV stations in Nigeria, but yours is different with respect to Wazobia, the name, mm -hmm. the symbol, the logo. When time you will see the TV, the brand of the logo, that's the Wazobia TV logo. So for artists, they're talking about the fact that their ideas have been stolen. The question is, with respect to copyright, the copyright protection comes instantly. Mm. It's an instant right. Immediately you have your ideas that is written down. You have automatically in Nigeria, you have the copyright protection on that. Okay. But what we, as, has happened with Nigerian system is that we have what we call a notification. So you do a notification with the Nigerian Copyright Commission to say, this is my music, this is a music I've written down. I would like to deposit this as a copyright. But automatically, immediately that music has come down to be written down, you have a copyright protection on that. Okay, so we know that in law today, we have, we, we have a fast um, rising part of the law called entertainment law. Now, right. everybody's talking about it. Universities are now even adapting to, I, I know, about two universities in Nigeria right now having it in the master's program too. Mm -hmm. uh, broad is popular, media and entertainment law. Now, um, what are the, the things that are obtainable under the law, you know, still on copyright and patenting? Yeah. Because I have, we have artists like 
Kiss Daniel, who almost lost his name mm -hmm. and then had to change it from an S to a Z. Z. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we have Ron Town who suffered the same thing and he had to quickly add an I to Ron Town to make it <laughs> I Ron Town to be able to save his name. But in a case of someone like Cynthia Morgan who particularly lost her brand yes, totally because of it, aside to what you just mentioned now, Aziz, what are the other steps we can take to protect the names, you know, the brand in itself, the person in itself? Protect that name. What should be done? Because this is record labels just bring contracts yes. and people are signing. What should you look out for when signing a contract? Okay, it is important to first state that entertainment law, as we have it, is majorly made up of two aspects. One is intellectual property law. Two, contract law. These are the two areas of law that made entertainment law. First of all, it is important as an artist, as someone who has ideas, ideas that you need to protect for you to be able to make money from it. I mean, that's the, that's the most important reason God has given you the idea. Yes. So if God has given you the idea, you should be able to make money from it. Mm -hmm. So you, first of all, you need to consult your IP lawyer. Your IP lawyer would advise you would assist you to identify intellectual properties around what you are doing. doing. It may actually be even more than one thing. For example, in a piece of music, the music itself may be a IP. The sound that is um, produced to support the music, even basically just writing the lyrics. the lyrics. So all these are IPs that a lawyer an IP expert would have been able to um, identify for you and advise you as to protection of sin, maybe by way of registration and all that. Then, now, go to, let's go to the other aspect, which is contract. Now, you know that you already have these ideas and the intention, the clear intention is for you to be able to make money from it. But that process would need you to interact with other people. For example, you need people to manage your brand. Mm -hmm. You need people to produce your music. You need um, you you you, are, you can even um, enter into contract with people, maybe just to go and sing for them, to promote perform. their brand, perform, to yeah. perform. All these are contractual activities. So you go back to your lawyer again to advise you as to how do I protect this? What kind of contract do I need? What are the things, what are the terms, that we, we call it terms, what are the terms that should be in the contract so that I am fully protected? protected. So that somebody would not come and later on and say, well, you don't have right to use your name again. Mm -hmm. So that somebody would not come later and say, that music, that song does not belong to you. So it is important that you talk to your IP lawyer who would advise you to identify the IP and then advise you in terms of the the kind of contract to, to put in place to protect you and ensure that that intention to make money actually come to pass. Okay, thank you so much, Aziz. This discussion is still hot, trust me. <laughs> the studio is on fire right now, and I'm learning a lot, and I believe you're doing so too. But you can check out our, um, the numbers on your screen to actually, you know, contribute in our conversation here on the show today concerning entertainment law and, of course, intellectual property. I'm so interested in this. Now... I remember then in school, I didn't get, you know, to do intellectual property. I chose another. <laughs> yes, so so I, Maybe you I'm, like money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I chose another part of law, you know. I, I think I did, it was oil and gas also. Wow. I, I ran, said it. Yeah, I said it, you like I money. I ran for oil and gas <laughs> yeah. instead of intellectual property. But basically, now, you just mentioned something very interesting, talking about performance and co what kind of contract should be picked. You know, now in the case of Kiss Daniel, the, there was allegedly the talk about him being paid <laughs> basically 50,000 naira. And yeah. his contract was stating to have been making millions. millions. And the only money he was owed, the, the record label was saying, was about 50,000 naira. And it was like, yeah. how is that possible? So they are saying this part of the money is going to your wardrobe. Uh, this other part is for, so it's basically for the packaging and this is just what's left for you. And he knew that some of the companies calling him for performance were paying hundreds of thousands and millions. Mm -hmm. So now, in a case where, you know, you have mentioned that an intellectual property lawyer should be there. Yeah to give advice. 
Now, we know that there, there's this term in law called a clause. Mm -hmm. And this is a lot of the time where all the higgy haggers are hidden. Mm -hmm. So if you don't really understand what the clauses state, you know, you will be in trouble. What are those things we should look out for when such clauses exist? Okay, um, it is important to first state that all contracts are unique. So the, the advice to be provided in respect of a contract would have to be considered from the perspective of the parties. Mm. What are the circumstances of the contract? If, for example, if you, if, if you are a singer and I'm a promoter and we enter into a contract, and the contract simply says that you'll be performing, and I will, depending on how many people that come for our show, let's say the, we say in the contract that where 100 people comes to the show, you get certain percentage. You, you, you get certain percentage. You get the cost, the price paid by 10 people. Mm. Now, if that is what the contract says, you know, from the surface, it looks very simple. But I can go back and structure it in a way that even the 100 people are coming to the show, they will pay different amounts. Okay. Maybe the first 10 people will pay, let's say, 100, 100 naira. And the, the, the next 10 people will pay 1,000 naira. And then what you are entitled to, as we have put down in the contract, is that the first 10 people, uh, whatever the first 10 people pay is what you are entitled to. So that is, you see that on the surface, it looks like right, something okay. that is very yeah. simple. But the interpretation may be different depending on the circumstances. That is why I said the other time that it is important for a lawyer to sit down Not and look at the contract. An IP lawyer would have looked at it that first 10 people, the IP lawyer would say, no, it can't be first 10 people. The IP lawyer would advise that why not, even if it is 10%, that you are entitled to. Why not let us um, couch the clause in a way that 10% of whatever money is made. Is made. made. Okay. You see now that even though the two concepts look the same. similar, they are actually different. 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 This are, I, I've just given you a very tiny example of what you can face in a contract. Okay. Tolu, there's been the word about royalties. Hmm. Now, I don't want us to base this on music alone, because in Nigeria, we've not yet gotten to the point where, you know, I, I, I remember reading about Game of Th um, a certain series going on yes. all over the place now. And I know that a lot of their actors, even for those who are not main characters, they're entitled to some certain yeah, amount yeah. of royalties, you know, concerning premieres and everything and the shows, because... In Nigeria, the first episode recently done, people sat down somewhere to watch, to watch and yes. they paid to watch, yes. you know, and they made money. Exactly. And a certain other brand too, whiskey brand, was there to support no, from their country. <laughs> so you would know how much money is being made. Mm. What is it about royalties that, you know, everybody in the entertainment industry, the musician, the actress, the actor, what should they look out for concerning royalties? Okay. So with respect to royalties, royalties is basically like um, your, it's basically like the benefits of your intellect. It's basically like the benefit of your efforts in bringing up ideas and all that. So usually in, in, in every IP contract agreement, it's necessary for you to look out for the So that's why sometimes you have royalties where it's going to be 10% of whatever is made from the product or 10%. And, and that is what actually keeps artists actors, actresses on for years. And if you have people that over the times that they are dead, but then because of the fact that you're still using the name, you still have royalties to be paid to that particular um, group of, uh, or the manager or the trustees that is managing the property. So royalty is one of the benefits of intellectual property. It's one of the benefits of the IP that has been um, discovered based on your ideas or based on your skills or based on your creativity over the years. So how has Nigeria accepted you know, that term of royalties? Because we have um, uh, basically artists, you know, musicians in a certain music body, even though they are divided right now from yes. what we're being told, oh, yes, exactly. they're complaining about this. They're saying that they're old royalties, and they're not being paid. Some in the new generation are saying that they found a way to protect themselves. So maybe you maybe know, to having yeah. the right contracts in place. 
Okay. So usually, um, the body you are talking about, the body also have a situation whereby you have agreement that is being signed. And so if you have the proper agreement that's been reviewed, you can say in the agreement to say that my royalty will be paid at a so period of time. All right, Tolu, I, I'm going to have to catch, um, yes. hold on on that. Hello, Favor. Welcome on the show. Hello. 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 Okay, so I think we lost Favor. Sorry. So, yes, you were saying about royalties. So, what I was saying is that most times, with respect to realtors, they have to have the proper agreement in place. So, with the body we just mentioned now, so if you have an agreement, with your lawyers and the maybe like your producer or your record label, and the, it's already stated there that your royalty will be paid at a certain period of time or a percentage of how much is being made. It's a contract that is binding by both parties, and it is expected that it's going to be binding on both parties and also can be enforced in the court of law. Mm. And so that is why over even in um, developed nations like in USA, in UK, in European countries, and also even in Nigeria, you have these royalties being paid at a particular period of time and uh, with a certain percentage. Okay. Now, Aziz, yes, yes. We, 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 we know, you know, we've talked about royalties, we've talked about intellectual property, but now let's, let's come down and ask, why do young artists fall into this trap of, you know, signing bad contracts, as they're called, mm -hmm. later? Because at first to them, it's not to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Using the term, they don't blue. So, <laughs> you know, you know. So, why? What are the factors that lead to them signing these contracts in the first place? The first one I believe, I strongly believe is ignorance. It is important that I think everyone should know their limits. You are a musician. You know that this is a contract that you are about to sign. It's a document governed by law. Mm -hmm. You don't have expertise. Why can't you just simply consult an IP expert? Mm. That's one. Second is, I think that eagerness, the restlessness to mm. get to make money, I think that, that, that may also contribute. OK, OK. So Tolu, tell us you know, uh, about your oncoming intellectual property event okay so like we uh, like we've been saying on our discussion saying that intellectual property is one of the um, great tools for economic development and the world intellectual property organizations has been able to create a day for celebrating and for raising an awareness of intellectual property in the world and as as an ip expert and ip law firm we also celebrate this day so april 26th of every year we have a day that is IMAX for the celebration of intellectual property. So know to, to create the awareness mm. for intellectual properties. And this year, what and they've been discussing different topics, you know, like we've discussed women and creativity, we've discussed technology, we've discussed uh, women in um, creativity. This year we're discussing intellectual property and the business of sports. Nice. You can wonder how sports and intellectual property, but there's a lot of relationship between intellectual property and sports. So we have the sport men, we have the people that comes with their brands, you know, so that the things we're going to be discussing on April 26th and the celebration will take place at the Hard Rock Cafe okay. starting at 9 a.m. It's going to be from 9 a.m. to 10.30. All right. And um, to also celebrate the day, we're going to have a Novelty Beach Volleyball to mark the day as a sporting activity for the day. Okay, so thank you so much for this. How can people follow you? on social media, Tolu. Okay, so, so for them to follow us on social media, um, you can have um, JE underscore events on social media and also Tolu KK on my Instagram page as well. All right, thank you so much. And we had today on the show, um, Tolu Olaloye and also Aziz Akonde, who are intellectual property lawyers, and they were here to teach us all about that. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.